All right, hello everyone, this is Jake Hostetler, and I am with Netronic here in Aachen, Germany. In this short video, we're going to look at the new features of the Visual Jobs Scheduler for Microsoft Dynamics NAV. So without any further ado, I'm gonna jump right into my nav environment and start showing you guys some of the new features. Then I'll run through a recap of the features we talked about. And finally, I will provide some links for either further research into the Netronic products, or if you have questions and want to send an email, I will also give you the email link for our sales team. So let me go ahead and switch now into my NAV environment. Okay. So just as a very brief review, for those of you who aren't sure or, or maybe don't know about the Visual Job Scheduler, it's part of a suite of add-ins that have been built uh, specifically for Microsoft Dynamics NAV. And what they do is provide visual front ends for your manufacturing module, your jobs module, and your services module. Okay, today we're gonna be looking at the visual jobs scheduler, and that's going to be just visualizing our jobs from NAV. So it's pertaining to the jobs module. Um, however, we also have the resources from the jobs from resource planning being pulled in as well as resources are used from resource planning. All right, so here's, I'm in my departmental menu. And from a navigational standpoint, let's just say I wanna navigate up here to my jobs area, okay? And you can see I have my visual job scheduler uh, living as a list item, all right? So first thing, I'm just gonna go ahead and open that up. And before I start talking about the filter here, I just wanna say that the first feature would be an enhanced performance of the visual job scheduler. So it's a passive feature. I can't actually show you uh, something visual here, but if you have used the VJS in the past and will use it again, then you will notice a significant difference, positive difference in the performance of the product as well. So we've actually altered the way we load in jobs and how we decide to visualize them. Um, so yeah. Big difference there, that's the first on the list, is the enhanced performance. Now the second is what we're looking at now actually, and this is going to be uh, enhanced filtering ability. So in the past you've been able to filter what's called a data filter, so pull in different types of data into the job scheduler. If you wanted to maybe visualize a given job or a given resource, okay? But now what I can do is actually I can define different filters and save them almost as favorites, right? So this is our new filter list that comes up before you open up the visual job scheduler. I have already two filters set, but let's uh, let's make a new one. Let's just call it uh, Jake's test filter, okay? And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna edit this filter, right? So in this case, uh, I can either filter on a job or let's say I'm gonna filter on a, on a resource group, okay? So let's come up here and let's select the resource group. Let's say I'm gonna filter on, I don't know, electricians, all right? So I'm gonna select this, okay? So now this resource group, the electricians, I've set a different filter called Jake's test filter. Obviously this is just to show you how you can use it. But basically what's happened is it's data filter. Right now it's set on the individual user, and I'll explain the difference here in just a minute, but basically I'm the only user that's gonna be able to use this filter at the moment. If I wanna to decide to make this a company-wide filter, let's say you, have an, uh, you outsource some of your work, so you have subcontractors, and multiple project managers or team leaders need to be able to use that filter to look at who's doing what as far as the subcontractors go, then you can go ahead and make this a company-wide filter, in which case all of the users, so when I say user, I mean those having a planner license of the visual job scheduler, will be able to come in here and use this company-wide filter that you've created. So it creates a flexibility to share filters within your team as well. So for now, let's just leave this on the user, uh, the individual user. I'm gonna select okay. So what's gonna happen, I'm still gonna load in all my jobs, okay? At least those where the electricians group is being utilized, okay? Now, a 
couple different things here before I jump into the resource view. You'll notice that uh, the jobs themselves look the same. So you see the hierarchy of the jobs from NAV. However, now, if I were to select a job, so what I've done is just I've expanded this out. This is not a new functionality, but what's new is that you see once I select a job, you get this highlight highlighted border around the overall job. So on the Stilangorian system implementation, I get this highlight highlight around. Now what this allows me to do then is say, okay, now great, I'm in this job in this jobs view. But when I switch into my resource view, okay, in the past, it was difficult to identify to which job, okay, if I was on a certain job in the jobs view and I switched into the resource view, which job was I working with? And now you see this highlight is staying on the individual job planning lines that belong to the job that I have in my jobs view, in this case, the Silangorian implementation. Okay? So this allows you to switch in between views and very easily see which job you're still working with. Right? Now, we'll come back to the resource view again, but just speaking of, of different views, we actually have a new view here, which is called our resource capacity overview. Okay, so those of you that are familiar with the histogram, know that the histogram gives you this visual output of your resource utilization, okay? But now what we can do is actually switch, and instead of just having this load capacities in a visual format, we also will have them in a numerical format, okay? So now I see, and we're pulling all this data from NAV, right? But now I don't just see it in the in the form of a histogram, in the form of a graph. I can also see it here by the numbers, how what percentage of, of jobs on these resources are booked, quoted, free, and then I see the actual numbers in hours as well. Okay. So this is just our initiative to bring the worlds of maybe reporting and scheduling closer together. This isn't pure reporting, but what we're achieving here is to give you just one more layer of transparency across what's going on within your jobs. All right? All right, so for the final two features that I want to show you here, I'm going to come back here into my resource view. And... A question often comes up, okay, what if I have here a job allocation and, for example, this one is for six hours, but I'm actually going to need to extend that. So in the past, I've been able to click in here and extend this by manually inputting maybe 12 hours instead of six or 20 hours instead of six. But now what I can do is if you see my little mouse icon that comes up with this right-facing arrow, I can grab this and I can actually drag now the job planning line across maybe the number of days that I need to have this going. So let's say this is actually going to take the entire week. I'm just going to pull that across the entire week, and now you see what happens is it automatically pulls itself across. The number of hours and duration for that job planning line readjusts, okay? And that was all without having to click into the job planning line itself, okay? Now, uh, one final thing I want to show here, pretty nice. So in the past, you've had the ability to split tasks across resources. And now what we've done is actually enhance that a bit further as well. So now if I, if I have here, for example, a 30-hour task on Carl Simmons, and I actually want to share that task down here as well onto Steve Johnson, who is another resource who I know can do this, I'm going to go ahead and click here on the right. I'm going to say split job planning line, okay? So I'm actually going to decide to change the quantity to be shifted. Let's say, uh, let's make it 18 and 12. So 12 is going to remain, and 18 is going to be shifted down onto another resource. Namely, let's select here Steve Johnson for my resource list. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to create a link. Okay, so this is another new feature of this is that now that I'm splitting job planning lines, I want to know that these still are connected. So now a link's going to be created automatically. So now I've just said, okay, split splitting update on the 7th. So 
18 hours from that 30 hours are going to be shifted down to Steve Johnson, who's my alternative resource in this case, and 12 of those hours are going to remain on Carl Simmons, and I want the link to be created. So now you see I've just selected that okay. 12 of those hours have stayed on Carl, 18 have now shifted down to Steve, okay, and you see the link is created as well. All right, so these are some of the key newest features of the visual job scheduler. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch from here out into my PowerPoint. So we looked at enhanced performance, which like I said was passive, enhanced filtering, where you can set your filters and then pull in and redefine filters that you can share either with other team members or company wide, or you can also keep them for yourself as an individual user. We have the interview job highlighting, so when I select the job in the jobs view and I switch into the resource view, for example, I can still see via the highlighted border which job I'm working with. And then we also have the second load capacity view, okay, in which case we saw the number values instead of just the, the visualized histogram. We have the ability to adjust the duration of a job planning line by just dragging it to the left or to the right with the arrow that we saw. And finally, what we looked at was the enhanced job planning line splitting. So we can split now not only just across jobs and resources, but we can define exactly how many hours of a split should go to an alternative resource on which days and whether we want to define a link or not. All right. So thank you for your kind attention. You can find more resources at www.netronic.com as well as, uh, or if you would like to send an email, maybe with some questions, please sales at netronic.com. We look forward to hearing from you. So thank you all, have a great day, talk to you soon.